in 2010, mm -hmm. you were given yes. uh, the award for mm -hmm. the best graduate student paper. Uh -huh. Can you tell us uh, about, about it? Yeah, so this was uh, part of my dissertation. Yeah. Um, so it was looking at uh, the ownership ties between all publicly traded firms in India. So it's a massive network, economy-wide network of the firms in India and how they are connected through ownership ties. Yeah. So it basically gives us sort of the control and relational structure of the Indian economy. Yeah. So the paper was about looking at, because I find some interesting patterns, uh, I find some interesting clusters, and so the paper was really about investigating where do these clusters come from, why are some firms in these clusters and some firms not, what is the origin, and also what's the consequence. So if you are in one of these clusters, does that help you in your performance and how? So it was really investigating the antecedents and consequences of network structure. Why yeah. did you choose HSC Paris? Yeah. After I finished my studies in the US, um, I applied for jobs throughout the world because I, I didn't have any locational constraints. Yeah? My husband and I, we both wanted to travel and see the world, right? It was such a big opportunity, yeah? So I applied everywhere in, in the world and I got job offers from many different places. And HEC was the highest research ranked institutions among the jobs that I got. And that's what attracted me. Um, so it, it's a place where there's a lot of support for research. Um, there are people, my colleagues are very productive in research, which is very important because, you know, as a, as a young scholar, young, I put that in quotes, not in age, but in experience. Um, as a, uh, you know, it's important to be able to learn from other people and to have other people in the department who know what they're talking about when it comes to research, right? And HEC actually is very multidisciplinary, so this is also very important. Um, to be in an environment where your disciplinary background is understood and respected, yeah? Um, so, yeah, these were the reasons why we chose HEC and also, you know, coming to France and, exactly. you know. <laughs> C can you tell us more about your latest findings? Yeah. So, one of my papers, which was published uh, two years back, um, is about the U.S. Uh, interorganizational network. It's the alliance and uh, joint venture network in the United States. And an interesting thing that we find, so my co-author for this paper is my advisor, David Nook. So an interesting thing that we find in this paper is that um, the network of ties, the structure of this economy-wide network is very much shaped by economic booms and busts. And so uh, when there's an economic boom, uh, basically the structure of the network becomes much more complex, it becomes much greater in quantity, uh, in the number of ties that firms form with each other. Um, when there's an economic downturn, a lot of the relationships just break, right? Okay. Because relationships require resources, and during economic downturns is when firms sort of uh, uh, pull back, yeah, in every way, including in terms of interorganizational relations. One of the findings that uh, I'm trying to <clears throat> get published as we speak <laughs> um, uh, is a paper about what is, the, what is the social antecedent of network structure, right? And we find that founders' community ties, right? So a firm might be 70 years old, yeah? But the founders' community ties still have an effect on this firm's network structure 70 years later, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, this, 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 this kind of research, uh, it, it follows in the idea of imprinting, that when firms are born, the kind of economic and social conditions that are there at the time of birth continue to affect the firm throughout its life course, right? So we extend that finding to the area of networks, and we find that it holds. Okay. What is your hope yeah. for the future? For myself or? Yeah, for yourself, for what, what kind of hope do you have for the, f for the future? Yeah. 
Well, I would like to see a more equal world. I would like to see a world uh, where uh, opportunities are more fairly distributed mm -hmm. and the access to opportunities is not limited, especially access to educational opportunities, since that's my field, right? Um, are not limited by geography, uh, by nationality, by skin color, by gender. Um, I think that's very important. It's, it, it's the biggest challenge that we as a world face uh, because we have you know, countries like India or Africa where you have such a huge young population and if we don't make access to good education, not just education, but good education uh, available to them, I think we could easily devolve into crisis. <laughs> mm. that's, that's true. Yeah. Well, I would like to thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank that you. was so nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you again. You are so easy to talk to, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> yeah, thank that was you. a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you.